what streaming and cable did just last year. Okay, last year, July of 2022, was a very historic month. Here's why. That was the month where officially streaming, Rob, if you can go back on the screen, that was the month where streaming passed up. No, no, you go back where you are. You're good. I'm just saying put your mouse on. the. Yeah, right there. Okay. That is the month where streaming passed up cable. So if you look at cable, it was going down. Uh, uh, this is a two-year chart from 21 to 22. It went down, it went down, and went down. So boom, it hits 34.4%, and streaming goes up to 34.8%. Now, before you go to the other one, let's stay here. A year later, to see where streaming goes and where cable drops, how big of a difference would you think would happen? Just one year. If you go to the next chart that the, chart that the reports just came out with is the following. When you go here, you now see wow. streaming went to 38.7. So the lead they had was only 0.4%. They go to 38.7 and cable drops to 29.6. What's the difference there? Roughly 9.1. The separation in one year. That means you're going from, you know, first quarter to second quarter. You got a, you know, touchdown lead. All of a sudden, you got a three, four touchdown lead in one quarter. Boom. So this goes to 38.7. At the top is what? YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, Prime, Disney, Max, Tubi, Peacock, Roku, all that stuff, right? Cable getting crushed. However, what is keeping cable? What happened? No, nothing. Yeah, what, what keeps, what's keeping cable in business? So watch. Rob, do me a favor. Uh, b before we go to this, I want you to think about this. Three things. We're talking to our guys here yesterday. Uh, shout out to uh, uh, Brandon Kelly and Elon. Phenomenal conversation we're having with these guys. And here's what we saw. The number one thing, the, the three things that are keeping cable in business. First thing is old folks listening, watching TV. Okay, They just want to go home and watch Fox, CNN, MSNBC. That's kind of how they get their news. No problem. Okay. And there's a timeline to that. You know, I'm 44 years old. I'm not living forever, okay? So old folks are not going to be around forever when they're watching what they're watching. Number two is sports, okay? So cable for the longest time has always had sports. Football, mm -hmm. soccer, baseball, you know, basketball. We watch ESPN. NBA yeah. on TNT. TNT. You watch, da, 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 right? da, da, we watch, da, da. We, we consume sports. So what's happening with sports lately? Sports teams are now saying, I'm going to do it myself. And not only that, streaming companies are now offering money to who? Sports deals and yeah. saying, hey, bring NFL to us. We're Amazon. Bring yeah. this to us. So cable's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. We thought our only competition was DirecTV, and now DirecTV's running out of money. But you guys can't pick this up to streaming. Why would anybody want to watch streaming? And Tom, who one day said, I said, dude, I got to watch this game. Tom, how am I going to be able to watch this game? He says, Pat, go on Hulu. You can watch the baseball game on your phone. I said, like, what are you talking about? I'm younger than Tom. <laughs> but when it comes to technology, Tom's younger than me. Yeah. So I, I'm like, Tom, show me how to do this. I go on home. I'm like, are you kidding me? You mean to tell me I can watch the game? I said, yeah, Pat, just watch it here. Do uh, you remember this conversation you and I had? Because cable went out in your neighborhood. Yeah, because cable went out of my neighborhood. Brilliant. So I'm watching this. I'm like, sick. On your phone and your iPad but, at HD. But, but this is the last one. Let me tell you what the last one is. I want to ask this question. You guys all know the answer to this question, except for Rob. All right. We had dinner last night. And we had a good conversation about this. Folks, if you're watching this, what percentage of cable TV do you think their advertisement comes from Big Pharma? What percentage, Rob? I'm actually curious to know for people to answer this. And you want Rob to know, too. I, Rob, Rob gonna don't guess. look it up. Don't I want you Rob. to guess. What, do you, what okay. do you think the number is? What percentage of cable TV advertisement you think comes from Big Pharma. I'd like to see what the chat has to say as well. Yeah, well, by the they, way. they Googled yeah. it already. They got the answer. They're, yeah, so, guys, don't Google it. Yeah. You have to randomly so, guess, Rob, how I'd much I'd say above 60, so 60 to 70%. Go Google it now and see Google what it. percentage of advertisement money for cable comes from Big Pharma. Wow. And and wait till I drop this on you on, on what do you think is going to happen here next. So if you can pull this up. Uh, uh, What's the number? 75% Rob. Oh my God. 75. And this is as of two months ago. Drug dealers. May 11, 2023 is the article. 75% is coming from drug companies. Mm. Yeah, Pharma. So check this out. Let me break it to the cable folks that are giving all these big ass contracts to people like ESPN and Fox and CNN and ABC. And a lot of these guys, to be honest with you, good for them for getting their money, but they're getting overpaid because they would have never made that kind of money in the podcasting game.
game. Podcasting is hard. Cable is easier because you're going to have a script to read, teleprompter, 50 people handing you a piece of paper and research and 17 facts on a piece of paper. You don't have that when you're independent. This is why when you see a guy like Joe Rogan kicking everyone's ass, he doesn't have a research team. When he go to his office, you know what it is? It's him and another guy yeah. that's built a number one show and all these other podcasts you watch. What the hell are these guys doing? Yeah. Moral of the story. Here's a moral of the story that's getting me fired up. You ready for this? I'm ready. You ready for this? Let's go. Hey, if you talk to any presidential candidate, not that I'm going to be talking to any of them, but if we do. You never know. We ask the question. Just throwing it out there. You know what the question and the commitment I want to get? have. <laughs> Here's the question I want to get from them. Hey, Mr. Presidential Candidate. Yes. Um, out of nearly 200 countries worldwide, only two of them allow for big pharma to advertise. Which What are those? It's New Zealand and the United States. Interesting. Which is kind of strange, and a lot of American people are starting to ask the question, why is it that mm -hmm. only 1% of countries in the world allow for pharmaceutical companies to advertise, us in New Zealand. Are you trying to say folks in Japan are dumb? <laughs> are you trying to say folks in Germany are dumb? Or Mexico, or Canada? Or even some of these socialist companies that you admire, countries that you admire? Venezuela. You know, well, how about China? Why don't they allow big pharma to advertise? Isn't it deeply concerning to you? Well, it is. What if, moving forward, are you willing to agree as a president that if you become a president, you will no longer allow Big Pharma to advertise on cable TV. And if this candidate, there's one candidate that I know for a fact would say yes, and he'd run with it. You know what his name is. His initials are DJT. DJ okay. Do you know what happens if Trump runs with this? Let me break it down for you. If 75% of cable is getting their money from Big Pharma, and they all supported vaccine, and they all supported us taking the vaccine over and over and over and over again, they said, moving forward, you can no longer do it. Especially, you know why this could happen today? Because this happened after COVID. And people don't trust pharma today. They don't trust CDC today. They don't trust the government today. And they don't trust the mainstream media today. The lowest it's ever been. They don't trust it today. If the president said, you know what? Moving forward, guess what? We're not doing this no more. Big pharma's out. Oh. This means 75% of mainstream media companies are gone overnight. Wow. Overnight. CBS, ABC, NBC, CNN. ESPN, CNN, Fox, go to Fox, Bye. commercials, MSNBC. Their budget is gone. So these guys that are they're able to pay them all this money, they're not paying them the money. Pfizer's paying them the money. Mm -hmm. All these big in, in, in pharmaceutical right. companies are paying them money. Now that they're not getting the money, they're going to go to the talent and say, listen, man, I know paying you six million dollars. We kind of got to bring that to one and a half million. What? Six million is what I've been getting paid. I've been living in this ten million dollar house. You want me to get out of this house? We can't pay you that anymore, bro. We can't. I'm gonna leave. Well, then no, go do a Moderna's podcast. been paying you that. Then it's gonna be well, go, go leave. But, 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 <laughs> where am I gonna go? I'm gonna go to CBS. They also have the same problem. I'm gonna call NBC. They also have this. Let me call my manager. I'm going to call my manager from WME. Hey, Johnny. He was laid off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so the moral of the story here is all of this stuff that's going on, uh, you're going to see what it's going to go down to. Here's what it's going to go down to. It's going to go down to who can sell, who can perform, who can get eyeballs, who can get subscribers, who can keep creating content that's exciting, sexy, interesting, who keeps recreating themselves? Because those who don't, this dinosaur, caveman model of how the media's ran protected by big pharma will be destroyed overnight. If a courageous president has the brass to say, moving forward, big pharma can no longer advertise. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.